your new Netflix special, John Mulaney and the Sack Lunch Bunch. Yes. I'm very excited about this. Yes. Uh, this is a, a sort of variety show w with kids involved. Yes. This is a, this is a show uh, for kids uh, by an adult uh, with kids present. Uh, it's a children's musical special. And I am a man with no children and no musical ability. But uh, I wanted to do a variety special, and I wanted to do it with kids. Yeah. And uh, kind of, uh, it, it, it's a nod to the shows I grew up on. Yeah. And I wanted to do, like, the Sesame Street I grew up on and you probably grew up on, which was that, like, funky, like, like Art Garfunkel and Grover and a girl named Gina would be, like, leaning against the stoop, smoking a cigarette. Yeah. And... <laughs> They did, they'd be like music, uh, but then someone would come over and be like, you hear about Mr. Hooper? And they'd be like, what? It'd be like, he died. And they'd be like, oh, no, what's death? And it'd be like, it's when you die. And then they just <laughs> cut to an industrial video of <laughs> orange crayon being made, and we forget about the, that we just <laughs> learned the existential dread of death, and we're <laughs> watching a weird industrial of orange wax becoming crayons, and then you cut back, and it's Smokey Robinson, and he's like, Near, far, and then yeah. you cut back and you're just <laughs> you're like, like, all right. Yeah, what a weird show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is bizarre. Yeah, I don't think there was a script to that. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, you start the whole special with the quote. Do, do you mind uh, do you oh, yeah. reading the quote or saying the quote to everyone? Um, the, the special begins with a, a maxim that I find to be quite true, which is, do you know who tells the truth? Question mark. Drunks and children. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah. And, yeah, who, who's, who, who's that... They believe. Yeah. True. Everyone, they agree. Wise words. Wise words. Uh, who, who is that quote from? That is from Erica Jane of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, uh, <laughs> season nine, episode 20. It's right after they go to the uh, wine tasting thing where Kyle and Teddy uh, get way too drunk. The next day, Erica says, you know, who tells the truth? Drunks and children. I was working on the special at the time, and I was in one of those moods where I went, that's going in. And <laughs> Absolutely. And the kids are kind of, they're not like drunks. Uh, <laughs> Well, they can't drive. They shouldn't drive. But uh, they are very blunt and truthful the way some people are after they've had a few drinks. Yeah. They, uh, they come up to me on set. One kid came up to me the first day and he said, because the special was directed by a great director, Reese Thomas, uh, who I've worked with many times. And he said, so you're not the director? And I said, no. And he said, oh. And I said, do you think I have less authority now? And the kid said, yeah, I do. <laughs> And he walked it's away. Honest. Yeah, but just you, you, blunt. But you talk about like some. They uh, got into their fears. Yeah, I wanted to know what they were worried what, about. What was what scared you as a child, John Mulaney, little John Mulaney? What scared me as a child was not just Robert De Niro from Cape Fear breaking into my house, <laughs> but it was that I, being the only one that was prepared for Robert De Niro from Cape Fear to break into our house, that I would be the lone survivor, and so it was on me. It was my burden. Because none of my, my, my brother, my sisters, my stupid parents, they weren't prepared for Robert De Niro. And he, <laughs> he kicked the crap out of Nick Nolte. And dad, you are no Nick Nolte. All right, all right, yeah, come on, come on. So I had to sleep with, I slept with a crowbar under my bed. What? And I, yeah, yeah, I just found it recently. It was kind of sweet. And <laughs> it became like a, a toy of yours? Uh, no, it became a crowbar because I was ready to roll at any time. <laughs> And I had a bat, and it was like, if I hear Robert De Niro downstairs, ha, 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 on it, you know. Yeah, you, you were ready to attack. Yeah. Uh, I got to say, the celebrity cameos are fantastic in this yes, special as well. Yes. I love it. It's, it's like uh, Richard Kind. Yes. Uh, uh, um, Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal is in this. Uh, David Byrne. Yes, David Byrne. Uh, Andre DeShields, who just won the Tony from Town, and Annalie Ashford. A lot of great Broadway and film people yeah. came together, which was super fun. Is there any, any guests that you wanted to have on that you couldn't get? Stevie Nicks. Ooh. I wanted Stevie Nicks. She's tough. A hush fell over the room unlike any I've ever heard before. Yeah, because she's a magical being. She is a magical being, but she, when she passes on a TV project, she really passes on it. What do you mean? Uh, well, I was looking for her for like a month. You know, I can't catch her. She's, you know, uh, she's a, a ghost in the wind, right? Yeah. So I finally called her manager, and I said, this is John Mulaney. And she went, oh, you're that guy. <laughs> and I went, yes, I am. And I, she said, listen, Stevie heard about the project. 
uh, but she's on tour and she has a limited break, and so it's just not something she can do. I said, I totally understand. Thank you so much for considering it. And then she continued. She said, also, Stevie uh, listened to the song and she doesn't think it's funny. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, you know, the first answer was good enough. Uh, <laughs> and she said, she said, Stevie's confused uh, because this is not one of her songs. And I said, oh, no, I know, it's a parody song uh, that she would be singing in. Uh, but if she doesn't like it and is not available, and she said, yeah, she doesn't like it. And uh, <laughs> I said, OK. And I started laughing really hard because this was the longest pass I'd ever heard <laughs> in about a decade of entertainment. And she said, you know, she did do TV once with Ryan Murphy. I said, yeah, she was on American Horror Story Coven. She did uh, Seven Wonders, that song. And she said, yes, but Seven Wonders is one of Stevie's songs. And I said, I know that. <laughs> this was a parody song. And she said, but she doesn't find it funny. And I said, I get that. I get all of it. Oh my God. And then I, wow. I said, I, said, I want to say, I want to let you know, I said to her, uh, I've been passed on many times. This is the greatest pass in my career. And I, I, please thank Stevie for me and just tell her I said hello and basically tell her I wrote the part because I want to hang out with her. And her, her manager said, well, then come hang out. We have people in the backyard all the time. <laughs> so are you going to hang out with Stevie Nicks? I don't know. She didn't like my song. <laughs> come on, man. But, come on. Yes, she invited you over to the house. Uh, yeah. And it's on and on and on